Now, uh, with this, a common question I get is, if I just modified my XML document to have a new tag, uh, does that mean that I also have to modify my program? Um, there's no magic happening with XML. It's it's very much similar to if you change the data structure, you got to recompile your program. Well, if I add these two fields to my XML document in an effort to extend it or further clarify this field, I also need to modify my RPG program to instead look for these new tags as I'm parsing it. Um, if I did not recompile my program, it wouldn't bomb as it would if a, potentially as it would if a, if a physical file or a data structure changed. Um, but it would be looking for the name's contents right within the name beginning and ending tag instead of looking for the first and last name. Um, the one thing that you notice that uh, is different between these two structures is that, sure, this defines the names and it, it holds the data but does not find, define the actual data type or the length of data or, for instance, how many times a piece of data can repeat. That's where XML schema definitions come in. So go into Next slide. An XML schema definition is the way that an XML file has restrictions put against it, much like a physical file or a data structure like we saw on the previous slide, in that you can um, specify uh, parentage. So in the data structure that we were looking at, okay, all these fields are children of the, the post address data structure. You can specify lists of values. So for instance, if we had a, a state field, um, we could say that the only valid values within this field are these 50 two-digit codes. We could specify patterns for valid values for a field. So we could say that uh, this element can only hold lowercase characters A through Z. And um, another one is you can also sp uh, specify ranges. So you could say, well, this value can only be um, greater than 10 or less than 100. Now those are that's just a, a little sampling of what you have available with XSDs, but that's the extent of what you do, or uh, uh, a portion of the extent of what you've got available to you as you're defining them. So much like you'd build a database table or a grouping of tables, that's the same thing that you're going to be doing with an XML schema definition. So you can apply rules to the data you're going to be passing in the XML document. So let's jump right into um, an example here. So this is a schema document. And it's based upon the structure that we're seeing right here. The clues we define the root element. Um, its name is uh, post adder, and it is of complex type. Now, complex type means that it uh, uh, contains elements, child elements, and attributes. The, uh, the, the opposite of that would mean that it would be a simple type, meaning it wouldn't have child elements or attributes. And to further define the child attributes, you enter into what's called a sequence. Now, I don't know why they didn't call this the define child attributes element, uh, but I didn't create the spec. So uh, here's the sequence, and we further define um, the first child element by specifying another element tag. So we uh, specified our first root element up here, went into a complex type, a sequence, and now we've got the, the first name element. And it is also of complex type, so it has child elements and or attributes. So we go into a sequence for this element. Now we finally get down to a simple type of element, meaning it gets actually down to a native data type, what I like to call it. So we're actually at the point of defining a string versus um, another element below it. And so we've got the, the first name and the last name. So let's just go back and here. So um, we've gotten to the post adder name, first and last. And that's defining right here. And then lastly, within the name, we're going to define an attribute called title, and it's also a type string. Once we've defined all the contents of the element, we can close out the content type, or the complex type, and close out the element, and then further define the other children for uh, post address structure. And these are all also of simple type. Uh, just a second, I've got to take a drink of my goat's milk. There we go. Now, uh, these are all the same, but once we get down to phone, we notice something a little bit different. Uh, this is an occurrence mechanism that allows us to specify exactly how many iterations should be allowed within uh, the post adder element, um, how many times phone can appear within it. So we want to say that, okay, well, we need at least one uh, phone number to appear in it, but we don't want any more than two. Now, another example of this use might be if you're passing an order 
across the wire in XML format, and you have an order detail area where you want to be able to say, well, I need a minimum of one, uh, but I also don't want to limit them on how many they can send because after all they're sending me orders and I'm making money. So instead of putting the value two in here, you'd actually put the word unbounded, and then that would allow any number of that element to appear within as a child within its parent. The last attribute that we've got here is an attribute of the post address data structures, excuse me, um, and it's of type Boolean. So within the schema definition, a type Boolean means that you can have two values in this field. You can either have the word true or the word false. Now, herein lies the, the benefit to XSDs, because if you just sent an example of XML to a trading partner, for instance, and said, okay, here's our XML and here's what we're expecting you to send us. If you didn't have um, the rules defined as far as what is valid in each field, they wouldn't know whether or not this was supposed to be true-false or a one and a zero, or in RPG's case, uh, star on and star off, et cetera. So that's really where uh, schemes play and allow you to define and uh, publish what your standard is for your XML structures. Um, on last note, before I go to DTDs, this can, a schema can be used at both runtime and uh, uh, development time. At development time, it's uh, for the most part used so you can get a representation of what your XML actually looks like. And when you're composing your RPG program, for instance, uh, you'll, you'll have this representation right here and you can uh, fill in the holes as you're going with um, what dynamic pieces of data need to be there. But then also at um, runtime, a lot of use it to validate XML as it's coming in the door. So if somebody sends you an XML document, before you do anything with it, you apply a schema definition to it, which essentially traverses the whole XML document and checks for valid data in each one of the fields. So it would go through and say, okay, um, this postal address, does it have a, uh, a name element? Does it have a street city state zip element? Oh, there's a contact element in the XML. I wasn't expecting that, so then it would throw a, a schema validation error, for instance. Um, a lot of the times I, I steer away from schema validation simply because I find that I'm revalidating the data anyways once it gets into my system, so I've got business logic that I need to apply to it. Uh, so most of the time I do not put schema validation into a production environment. Uh, because also, it, I mean, you're if you're looking for speed, you just went through a whole parsing of the document and validation of each field before you even got to the point of pulling the data out of it. So that's schemas. Um, we also have what are called DTDs, document type definitions, and it's essentially the old technology which is replaced by XSD. You do not want to use DTDs, and here's why. The biggest downfall with them is that you are unable to specify um, a data type for a field. So in the other example, we were able to specify that the residential field, for instance, was strictly Boolean. Um, you couldn't put another string in there or an integer and whatnot. Uh, we were also able to specify that um, the remainder of the fields were strings. Uh, we could also specify whether or not a, a field was a date data type, and that's all that could be contained within it. That's the biggest downfall of DTDs. So DTDs were developed first before XML schema definitions came along. Excuse me, and they have uh, since been replaced. Now, note that there's still a lot of them out there uh, in production environments, or rather in uh, services that are publicly available. So, for instance, uh, I just got done writing some web services for a, a credit card provider, and they had um, DTDs that they made available to me. Which, um, right away, what I do whenever I get a DTD is uh, go into WDSC. Uh, put the DTD in there, right click, and then create a schema out of it. And then you can get back to something with the type of format and create more well-defined rules in the data. Um, 